In this video, we are going to be unpotting our plants and repotting them in to some long fibered sphagnum moss on this vert plant that we got. But let me give you guys a brief update about them. It has now been a week and the Drosera Adelaide honestly looks really, really good. However, the Drosera Andromeda looks pretty much exactly the same as when I first planted it. Now, when I released the video, one of our awesome subscribers Mr. Striker gave me some advice about the plants and because I am pretty worried about these plants I'm going to take that advice and I'm going to apply it even though the guy that I follow for those plants has very good success I'm still quite worried about the type of moss that we used. I also got a huge ziplock bag that we're going to be putting the plants into so that their humidity can stay a bit higher and they'll get more light instead of that really dark bucket which didn't give them as much light and didn't keep them as humid. So let's get started. So firstly, we need to cut off all this old thread and a few of you guys had some concerns about the thread. I wanted to eventually uh, rot away, disappear because I wanted to just be masked. I don't want to be seeing this thread, which is why I chose the green color. But if it doesn't rot away, I will be cutting it off anyway in the future. But we put this plant on last, so we're going to be cutting it off first. And I'm going to put them in this little Tupperware that I sprayed with some rainwater just to keep them humid and warm while they're outside here with me. So this plant I put on a kind of did it like a cocoon. I built them a bed, then I smushed them in with their peats that they came in, and then I put more soil on top of it. And then we can slowly pry the plant away. Just like that. There we go. And I'm going to put that plant into its container. Next up, it's time for us to get the Drostra Adelaide off. And I don't remember which one we did last, but I will just go, I guess, from the most exposed to the least exposed. This was very stressful to actually pull these plants off because I didn't want to damage any of their roots. And I slowed it down a bit here just so you guys could watch me really taking them off with a lot of care. Like I said, I don't want to damage their roots at all. Now before I clean the rest of the moss off the sides of the pots, I would really like you guys to please click on the link in the description to check out how this planter looks after two and a half years of growth. I followed this guy's guide. I cannot believe how many people have been so upset at me for just doing this project. It works guys. Just click on the link and literally look at it yourself. Anyway, I want to go clean the pot now and then I'm going to take apart that pot of sphagnum moss which is going to be really cool because I've never actually taken apart a pot of sphagnum moss before. So let me do it. By the way, yes, this is rainwater. It's not tap water. And there we have it, nice and clean. Now a quick note for you guys, this is not terracotta, this is ceramic. I understand you guys are worried that it will leach minerals into the soil and kill the plants. Please, once again, just click on the link in the description. The person whose guide I followed, the Fierce Flora, he has had his one for two and a half years now and they literally look better every single update he's done. The plants we have chosen, Drosera Adelaide and Drosera Andromeda, they are related to each other. They're both from the same area in Australia. They both live on seepages in moss, on seepages that are wet walls like this. Now let me get to the moss. I'm very excited to open up this moss. I've never had this before. So be a first time for me, maybe a first time for you guys too. Let's get it open. I've never done this before. I don't know what to expect. I'm using these, this specific pot of moss because it is the smaller pot of moss. What I mean by that is that the actual moss heads are literally like this, a smaller species than the others. So they are less likely to strangle out our plants when they start growing up. So let's see, there's a bunch of roots in here. So that means that there's probably something else in here, maybe some grass or ferns or something, who knows? There's some interesting roots. I wonder what it is. Ah, oh, yeah. You've got some sun juice. Looks like a capensis. And we've got bugs, guys. There's bugs in here. Look at that. Look like pill beetles, guys. Okay, so we have to ensure that we don't spread the infection into the other other pots. So I'm going to divide these out. Wow, I wasn't expecting bugs. This is so cool. Look at this, guys. Let's see if I can try and separate these a bit better. It's 
so that looks like some other form of moss. But the live sphagnum moss, look at that guys, they're like long little strands, it's so cool. Obviously get rid of all the star moss that's in between. That there's star moss. Look, how nice is that guys, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna keep separating this up and then once I've separated it all out and removed the bugs, I will then show you guys what we've got to work with. All right guys, so I just finished harvesting the moss and it took me way longer than I expected. There was this other type of moss, I think it's star moss or something, all up and in between the sphagnum moss and I pulled out every single strand. There were worms in there, there's little pull bugs and these tiny little orange mushrooms in there too. I have organized the piles of sphagnum in different sizes and I'm going to show you guys now what I think is going to be the best way to actually put these plants onto the planter. And in hindsight, I realized I should have taken the plants off after I harvested the moss. I didn't think it would take that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take little pieces of dead sphagnum moss and put them into the cones of the planter. After that, I'm going to take the plants, wrap their roots in the live sphagnum moss and make a little form of a ball or something. And then I'll take that ball and I'll put that ball on top of that little padding of moss that we initially put on there and tie that onto the planter. The reason why is because this is probably the best way to ensure all the roots have good, very good contact with the moss and then obviously the moss with the planter. I'm actually freezing, it has gone so cold since I started this video. Now that I've finished off this corner of the planter, I am going to go and get a live plant, wrap up the moss and tie it on. Wish me luck. And I used a lot of force to push these things in here because I did not want bad contact to be the reason for them not getting water. So yeah, let me go get them. So this is the plan. I have some moss off to the side here and I'm gonna take some strands, take our plant. We're starting off with Drosera Adelaide. Put it obviously inside of the moss, get it all nicely wrapped in there, get those roots nicely tucked in there and then with this thread here in the background tie it all together with a bit of string. Let me go get some help. I've just got Karen to help me here guys. And there we go, this is one down. We got eight more to go. It'll be pretty quick though. But yeah, just like that, and we will tie this onto the planter next. So let me go get the rest and get them done. All right guys, so I've had to move inside because the sun went down, but it is now time for us to put our little plant packages onto the little sphagnum bed over here. So I'm not too sure how I'm gonna do this, tying them together, but I do have an elastic band here that I'm gonna put around the planter and then hopefully I can Make a little gap, put the plant in, and then I can tie it all together and then remove the elastic. So, wish me luck, guys. Let me try it out. No, God, please, no, no! Yeah, so, to be honest, I was kind of expecting that. I just thought I'd put it on and see if it would pull the sphagnum moss off. And, of course, as you guys saw, it does. It, it pulls it off. So... I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do now, but let me think about it really quick. All right, so I have to ask Karen again to help me because I can't hold these and tie them at the same time. But we're gonna put these two on and she's gonna tie the knot around them. Okay, so we're just gonna do the rest of them all in here and then I'll be able to tie them all in more myself. So let's get going. So now that this side is done, I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the Drosera Andromeda, but I won't show you guys that. You understand the process now. So I will show you guys the planter once I'm done. All right, guys, it is now the next day and it was it's quite sunny, quite bright in my eyes, but I think the planter turned out amazingly well. Okay, 
Overnight, I monitored it, and as you can see, all of the moss has actually stayed green. Everything has stayed wet, which is perfect for our plants. That's exactly what we want for these plants. They love living in seepages where it's constantly wet and moist, just like this planter, guys. And I'm so excited to see how it eventually turns out. So let me show you guys where I'm putting the plants in their new spot now with that really big Ziploc bag I told you guys about. So as you guys can see, they're in this huge Ziploc bag, which actually keeps it a bit more humid and a bit warmer than that big bottle I had them in. They're just chilling for now, recovering. And you can really see just how much moisture the moss actually holds. Give these guys another week and they should be looking much better. That leaf there at the back has actually started to unravel over the past night, so that is awesome. That means that it is a, a bit happier. I cannot wait to see this plant be as full as the pictures in the link that I've told you guys about. It's going to look so cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to leave a like. Let me know in the comments down below if you think that they will love the new moss or not. And also subscribe so you don't miss out on their updates. But now I have some very exciting news for you guys. About four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, I got a whole bunch of really, really rare South African sun juice. And included in them, is Rorigula. Now I was speaking to one of my friends on Instagram, his name is Alex Carnivorous Carnival, and he said that I should actually sow those seeds before they get old and end up dying. So that is what we're going to be doing in the very next episode. I'll see you guys then.